We've got the updated Honda Passport. The pilot on a diet. Here we go. Oh, in the mighty V6. Oh, yeah. That's why you're here. How about it? The mighty V6. Everyone's going to turbo four. Is this yep. still has a V6? What is the size of the engine under this thing? A 3.5 liter with a nine speed automatic transmission, 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque, standard all wheel drive. And you can put regular fuel in the Passport. All right, so if you're not aware, Passport is built off the Pilot platform. We're gonna get into that as we go through the video. Right now, what do you get with this? What are the key standard features? The base trim comes with a seven inch driver display, an eight inch touchscreen, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a wireless charger, 10 way power driver seat with lumbar support, heated leather trim seats, a heated steering wheel, a moonroof, power tailgate, and Honda Sensing Driver Assist technology. In the U.S., a heated steering wheel is not standard, but is available. Oh, a push-button transmission. Mm -hmm. What are we going to put it in? you got to put it in S for a subscribe, and if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop, and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review, twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure to like and subscribe, but also follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to see what's going on behind the scenes and to get a question in. More on that halfway through. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto, and the links are below the like button. So after questions, coffee and cars, we have our hot topic and it's a good one today. Why would you buy this over something else in the Honda family, especially the Pilot? This has one row of seats deleted. That's the third row. It's slightly shorter and you get a huge cargo space. And are you noticing much of a difference in the drive from Pilot to this? Not really. You know, one thing about the Pilot and the Passport, the steering is so light. Uh, it's easy to maneuver in and around town in those tight parking spots. The V6 has tons of power. The nine speed automatic transmission is very good. It shifts smoothly. Last time we drove the Passport, it was a few years ago and we had the Trail Sport model. One of our biggest complaints about that Trail Sport model is that it didn't offer any extra off-road capability compared to other Passport models. Well, Honda has changed that. It now has an off-road tuned suspension, General Grabber AT Sport tires and 18 inch wheels. Exclusive also to that Trail Sport model is that nice sky blue color. So we're in the black edition. It isn't black. It's gray, yeah. uh, but uh, this is like kind of the top trim now, and you get some extra features on this too, right? Yeah, I mean, the exterior and interior styling elements are a little bit different. You get all of that black edition badging and 20 inch wheels. So you'll see when we move to the inside and we touch more on that, you've got some red interior accents too for that black edition model. So a naturally aspirated three and a half liter V6 is becoming a bit of an outlier now. We're seeing a move towards turbocharged four cylinder engines. We haven't seen the updates yet for Palisade and Telluride, but they might just go to hybrid or turbos as well. So this is one of the get it while you can cars because this is gonna go away. And for some people for long-term durability, if they're gonna keep their car for many years, they might wanna grab one of these now. And even if you're doing some towing, I mean, this can tow 5,000 pounds and you might find that the V6 is better for that than a turbocharged four cylinder. And I also find the difference in fuel economy between a turbo four and a V6 is really not that much. If you're gonna do some light off-roading, the Passport has a 21.1 degree approach angle and a 24.6 departure angle. So this is based on the Pilot, but it is slightly shorter and looks a little more stubby, but that's gonna be an advantage for some people, especially around mobility. What does it get on the outside? It offers 8.1 inches of ground clearance and comes standard with LED headlights, LED taillights, LED fog lights, body color door handles, dual exhaust pipes, 18 inch wheels, available 20 inch and a compact spare tire. So just a week or two ago, we had the Ridgeline, which is also based on this platform. So you've got Pilot, you've got Passport, and you've got the pickup truck all based on this. And sitting here looking forward, Andrea, it feels like the others. Yeah, I mean, it could be in any of them, really. There are a few key differences 
One that I'm really disappointed in is that the Ridgeline and the Pilot both have the offering of a nine inch touchscreen. This is just eight inch touchscreen, which means it only comes with wired Apple CarPlay and Android no Auto. No wireless. So if you get the Ridgeline right now, you get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as with the Pilot on that nine inch touchscreen. I think that's ridiculous for the price that Honda is charging for this on the top trim. There are so many other brands that have come out with standard wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. For those who don't care or are happy just to get a dongle and plug it in, that's great. But I think with these new vehicles, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android, and Android Auto has got to be included. But you get a push button transmission. Yeah. So so you get it all. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> this this uh, instrument uh, cluster is also not fully digitized. You get no. the center is a screen, but you get analog on either side. I'm okay with that because I'm a kind of a set it and forget it kind of guy. Yeah. I don't play with that screen very often. Uh, the rest of the interior has got nice materials. The door cards, you've got the two level door cards. You get an upper tray and a lower tray. It's exactly the same as the other ones. Yeah, and you know, one thing about this black edition model is it's supposed to have a few more premium comfort I, features. I don't see it. It has the leather trim seating and then it's got red accents throughout. Can you see the red stitching and the red on the seat Zach? Barely, because I'm colorblind. So I don't, it's, that stuff's lost on me. If you're gonna say, well, it's got red stitching, I'd be like, I I don't even see it, but that's just me. Uh, so there you go. Now, one big change to the interior is the center console. So Honda has made it larger. You can fit a full size tablet in there. And also at the front of the button shifter, you've got a larger tray now for two cell phones that will fit side by side. And then there's also another storage compartment, which my phone fit in just but, above that. But mine doesn't, but it is a good place to put your passport. Passport vets. I'm not sure you would want to leave that out in the open. Honda's done a really good job with the layout of this vehicle. I mean, it's a great family hauler. So much storage in here, but also the rear seat offers a flat floor. So anyone who's sitting in that middle seat is going to have a comfortable drive. Available features include navigation, driver seat memory, ventilated front seats, heated second row seats, and a hands-free power tailgate. Since this is based on the Pilot, the second row space is the same. You get a lot of room, leg room and head room. The seats slide fore and aft and they even recline. Comparing the Passport to the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the Passport offers 40.9 inches of front row leg room, which is about half an inch less than the Jeep. Second row leg room at 39.6 inches is a good size, offering almost 1.5 inches more leg room than the Grand Cherokee. And then you lift the power lift gate and this is where it gets big. You've got a huge cargo area. Underneath, you've got even more storage and a temporary spare tire. Cargo space is excellent in the Passport. Space behind the second row at 41.2 cubic feet and overall cargo space at 77.7 .7 cubic feet is larger than the Jeep. Some good questions on this. Let's get into it. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Is there a 360 camera on any of the trims? There is not. Another strange omission from Honda because the Pilot mm -hmm. on the top two trims has it and the trail sport model in the US has it, but not in Canada. So the way it works in product planning is you have people sit in front of spreadsheets all day long, mm -hmm. calculating uh, the hits and misses, what people really want and how much they're willing to pay for it. And they have a, a target number they're trying to hit for the cost of this car yeah. at the retail level in Canada. So they go through their checklist and they go, yeah, well, that's gonna cost more to get that feature in there. We'll omit that. Will anybody miss it? We, we're, they're guessing no. Yeah. So that's how these calculations are made. There's a big laundry list of things you can put in a car and they don't put them all in. And keep in mind, they want to keep the passport pricing lower than mm. the pilot. So you can't give the passport everything, I suppose. Yeah. Although I do think it's strange that the Trail Sport model doesn't have a 360 degree camera on the pilot 
Mm -hmm. in Canada. Okay, so you have to have also part of the job of the product planners is to have a grade walk. Okay, Passport will get you to this yeah. level with these features. Pilot will get you to this level and cost more with these features. And then if that's not enough, hey, we'll put you in an MDX. Yeah. Right? So it's called a grade walk for a reason. Mm -hmm. Does the 2024 Passport have variable cylinder management? It does. Yeah. Yeah. Honda said that for a long, long time. time. Yeah. yeah. So what that does is it switches off certain cylinders while you're cruising along. It's effective technology. A General Motors has had it. Yeah. Um, Ram has it in the Hemi. You you get um, cylinder switching off. And when you're cruising along, you're, you have no idea. Nope and better fuel economy because of it. We were entertaining the purchase of an all-out option touring version, but the passenger seat was failing any kind of height adjustment. Why would Honda cheap out and not give its customers fully adjustable passenger seat? At that point, we decided on another vehicle brand altogether. So this and the Pilot, both of them, even on the top trim, is a four-way power passenger seat. So that's front, back, seat back, front, back no height adjustment here. Now, I find that the seating position is okay in here, but I suppose if I was a taller person, I would want to lower it a bit. You know how you do it, Andrew? You do it like this. Yeah, you can just take a nap. <laughs> uh, but, you know, back to my point I just made a moment ago. They will sell you an Acura MDX. Yes, if you, if you want more than four-way. But I agree with you. Uh, you know, for example, the Hyundai Palisade has an eight-way power passenger seat available. So, you know, you, you, you do have to look at the competition mm -hmm. and you have to start saying to yourself as a brand, we've got to add this in. So that guy in the product planning office, yeah. he's opening up his spreadsheet right now. What a second, <laughs> we missed it, Palisade has it? Bob, we got to add it in. Yeah. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? I do like the Passport, but I have to wonder what the point of it is. It's bigger than a CRV, but not a ton. It's smaller than a Pilot, but not a whole lot. And it doesn't have a third row. Is there something unique about the Passport that would land someone there rather than one of the other two? So I'm gonna cover Pilot and Andrea's gonna cover CRV. So compared to the Pilot, this is cheaper anywhere from about three to $7,000 cheaper than Pilot. It also is smaller. It doesn't have a third row, therefore it's gonna be lighter, slightly better in fuel economy. And uh, you know what? For a lot of people, they just don't need that extra space. No, and I think for the Passport versus the CRV, first off, this is a lot wider than the CRV. Yes, the CRV has grown in size, so it really is a big compact SUV now, but it has a turbocharged four cylinder. It has a CVT. This has got a nine speed automatic transmission. It's got a V6 engine. So I think that there's a lot at play here. It can even tow more if you're doing some light towing as well. 5,000 pounds is pretty good. Um, I also think that some people just don't want a three row SUV. Some viewers have reached out and have said, look, I just want a large, five passenger vehicle that's comfortable and this passport fits the bill. Yeah, look how successful Jeep Grand Cherokee has been. It's one of the best sellers in this category. People don't need three rows. But we're going to get into all of the specs of this. Fuel economy is important in our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The base sport model is just over fifty and a half thousand dollars and the black edition we're test driving is just over fifty eight thousand. In the U.S., the base model is just under $42,000, and the top black edition is just under $48,000. Here's the fuel economy, 12.5 liters per 100 kilometer city, 9.8 on the highway. That's 19 miles per gallon city, 24 miles per gallon highway. The towing capacity is 5,000 pounds, and it comes with a three-year 60,000 kilometer or 36,000 mile warranty. In the United States, complimentary scheduled maintenance is covered for two years or 24,000 miles. So what else can you buy if you're looking for just five passengers, two row midsize SUVs? For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, 293 horsepower and a starting price over $57,500. The Ford Edge with a turbo four-cylinder, 250 horsepower and a starting price of just under $43,000. The Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport with a 2-liter turbocharged four-cylinder, 
269 horsepower and a starting price just over $52,000. The all-new Mazda CX-70 with a 3.3-liter inline six-cylinder, 280 horsepower and a starting price of $52,500. So there are four five-passenger SUVs for you to consider. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improved. This is really well laid out as a people mover. I like the price difference between this and Pilot. I'd love to see the updated 9-inch touchscreen in this Passport. And for Andrea, wireless <laughs> Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that's our review of the Honda Passport. What do you think of that? Thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, subscribe. We'll see you next time.